good happy Wednesday morning, December 16, 2020. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Wednesday morning, so let's begin. First up, we're going to begin with COVID-19 updates. New Hampshire COVID information. New updates and data. Let's take a look at that right now. And here is a look at that information for all of you right now. There are 32,545 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 16,681. 178 number of people in the United States have tested positive. 604 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 863 number of people have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 303, 292 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. Now let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where current cases of COVID-19 are. Nashua. 459. Now let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases of COVID-19 are. Nashua 2941. And now let's take a look at these three charts here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day in New Hampshire. In the purple, daily new positive COVID-19 cases. Orange, new hospitalization, and red deaths. Let's take a look at this chart here. Current cases in the purple, total current COVID-19 cases, and orange, current hospitalization. Let's take a look at this chart here. Total cases in the purple, total positive COVID-19 cases, orange, total hospitalization, red deaths, and blue recovered. And let's take a look at this chart here. Positive PCR test rate, positive PCR and antigen test rate, and daily PCR test. And now let's take a look at these three charts. Let's take a look at these charts here. Age group of cases and female and male of cases. Let's take a look at these three charts here. Infections, hospitalizations, and deaths. And let's take a look at this chart here. Deaths, percent New Hampshire population, rate slash ethnicity cases, and hospitalizations. And a reminder, your common symptoms, fever, lack of smell, cough, chills, difficult breathing, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. How it spreads, and prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. Yesterday, the first COVID-19 vaccine administered in New Hampshire. Frontline healthcare workers receive vaccine at Elliott hospital. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Well, winter's here. So what? Mahindra, the official tractor of tough, doesn't slow down for a little cold snow. And with that, Elliot ICU nurse Heidi Kukla becomes the very first person in New Hampshire to get the COVID-19 vaccine. I really hope that um, our getting this first inspires other people to not be afraid and to step up. Four other Solution Health employees joined Kukla in receiving the vaccine. 17 years on the job, she says nothing compares to working the front lines of this grueling battle. I've seen a lot of suffering as an ICU nurse and I've never seen anything even close to this. Governor Sununu says the arrival of the vaccine provides new hope in what has been an exhausting and dark past couple of months. Today, not just in New Hampshire, but across the country, this is the beginning of that light at the end of the tunnel that we've been talking about for so long. The COVID-19 vaccine making history becoming the fastest ever developed. Part of the reason why we have um, a vaccine so quickly is because the federal government has been funding the production of this vaccine well, they also um, carry out the typical vaccine studies. State epidemiologist Dr. Benjamin Chan says despite the quick turnaround, there have not been any corners cut in terms of safety. We 
believe that this is a, not only a very effective vaccine, but also a very safe vaccine. Now, because this is a new vaccine, Dr. Chan says the CDC, along with federal and state health agencies, are constantly monitoring for any side effects or reactions. Reporting live in Manchester tonight, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Dr. Benjamin Chan answers COVID-19 vaccine questions. Let's take a listen to that video. Moving just as quickly with Kubota subcompact and compact tractors, our number one selling tractor. First doses of the COVID-19 vaccine are given to frontline healthcare workers. Many people want to know about what's behind the rise in cases testing and when they will be able to be vaccinated. So we asked you to send in your questions for state epidemiologist Dr. Benjamin Chan, and he joins us live now through Zoom to answer some of those questions tonight, and let's get right to them. Good evening, Dr. Chan. It's nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Good evening. My pleasure. Great to be here. Okay, let's kick things off with a question first about the vaccine, since, of course, the first ones were administered today. So how long does it take for the recipient of these vaccines to get some protection from them? Yeah, so, so we have the new Pfizer vaccine, and we expect next week to have the new Moderna vaccine. Uh, both of these vaccines are two-dose series, so each dose is needs to be separated by three to four weeks, depending on the vaccine. Uh, people need to get both doses to have the optimal long-term protection. Uh, and with both of these vaccines, um, both of them have been shown to be about 95% effective at preventing COVID-19, which is fantastic. They're, they're very effective vaccines and much higher than the requirements set by the FDA for approval. Okay, let's talk about that second dose. This next question is from Denise. Okay, if you want to see this full video, we will share a link with you on the Riley King Network. Facebook page. FEMA sending staff ass to assist at some New Hampshire long-term care facilities. National Guard is also assisting as well. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Jessica Moran. I was referred to Bellwether Community Credit Union as I was having major issues with another institution. I applied online and within 30... They were able to deploy four registered nurses to us. Very happy um, to have five nurses um, staying for a, a four-day period. Much needed help from the federal government showing up to some of New Hampshire's long-term care facilities this month. FEMA sending 10 United States public health nurses and two health and human services support staff to facilities in Hanover, Manchester, and Bedford. Hanover Terrace says four registered nurses started work today and can stay for up to 30 days. Five residents have died from COVID-19 there, and more than 60 residents have the virus. You know, I have some staff members that have been here um, without a day off since the outbreak began. And so this will be a nice break for them to be able to take some well-deserved time off. In just over a month, the New Hampshire Veterans Home has lost 35 residents to COVID-19. FEMA is extending their help for an additional two weeks through December 28th. The National Guard is also there with two nurses and 10 soldiers. It has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, really has gotten us over the hump, um, you know, and, and helped us cover some really critical holes that we have. The New Hampshire Healthcare Association says staffing was an issue before the pandemic. In two years, they say there was a net loss of 1,200 licensed nursing assistants. And with that, as far as help from the vaccine is concerned, Hanover Terrace says that they are expecting a tentative date of January 17th. New Hampshire's Veterans Home says they still don't have a date as of yet, as of late this afternoon. They're hopeful to get one soon. Both places are preparing consent forms and educational materials about the vaccine for residents and staff. Reporting live, Jessica Moran, WMUR, News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Authorities identified two people found dead in a Manchester apartment on Monday. Officials report no threat to the general public. 
Let's take a listen to that video from WME War News 9, Kristen Carosa. I joined Bellwether Community Credit Union two months ago. When we first got closed down, I was afraid that we were going to end up going out of business. The Attorney General's office says officers from the Manchester Police Department responded to 1345 Bodwell Road after receiving a 911 call. Once inside, they say they discovered two deceased bodies. Those people have now been identified as Mercedes Tremblay and her son Mason Tremblay. Investigators say Mercedes was 25 years old and Mason was two. Today, autopsies were conducted on both of them. The medical examiner has determined that the cause of Mercedes' death was a single gunshot wound to the head, and the manner is still pending further investigation. As for Mason, investigators say the cause and manner of death are still pending. It's not uncommon that sometimes further investigation, um, both from the police department and from the medical examiner's office, is necessary to accurately determine the cause and manner of death, and this just happens to be one of those cases. Officials are asking anyone who saw Mercedes or Mason since December 6th to contact the Manchester Police Department Detective Unit. Contact, interacted in any way with either these people or maybe that residence, um, that would be very helpful. In the meantime, officials say people in the area are safe. We're always assessing any threat to the public, and based on the information that we have to date, there doesn't appear to be any threat to the general public. The Attorney General's office is working with the Manchester Police Department to solve this crime. Once they have more information, they will release it. Reporting in Manchester, Kristen Carosa, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Nearly 90 more COVID-19 cases at the state prison for men in Concord. Department of Corrections staff points to increased testing. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Jennifer Crompton. Here's a little holiday riddle. What's better than getting one gift? Getting an entire stocking. There's been an increase of nearly 90 positive COVID cases in the state prison in Concord, up from 28 one week ago. And according to the commissioner, it's because they're increasing testing, now able to convince more inmates to get tested. One quarantined group, in particular, responsible for the jump. We had upwards of 75 individuals in a unit in which we had quarantined, uh, engaged in a test. So we were able to find a lot of asymptomatic positive COVID uh, residents. She says there's been resistance to testing because a positive result in a quarantine group restarts the clock at 14 days. There's been education about its importance and that of wearing issued cloth masks, now expected when they leave their rooms. We have the same problem that society is experiencing. Some people choose not to wear the mask. Hanks says three inmates were briefly hospitalized, all returning, that no one has died of COVID and that health-wise people are doing well. Their physical movement inside restricted some time ago to where they are housed, moved to designated areas if they test positive or have been exposed, families sharing concerns. You had asked about clean clothes and shower. We're getting people access to shower. We have had families reach out to us to uh, identify someone uh, whom we want to engage and make sure if there's any hiccups, as there would be in any normal business, that we make quick adjustments. She says mental health appointments are still happening. Visitation, an ongoing challenge. The visiting room is closed and video visitation isn't yet available in quarantine or isolation and staffing, an ongoing issue. But more National Guard help is on the way. Jennifer Crompton, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Manchester Board of Aldermen approves old police building for emergency homeless shelter, building on Chestnut Street. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9.
Okay, looks like we're having a little technical difficulties with the video player. Hold on, everyone. Sorry about that. Tis the season to save at Beltane's Building Supply. With shovels, thermal gloves, and portable heaters all on sale through December 31st. Shop one of our nine locations safely. Order by phone or shop online at Beltane's.com. Count on Beltane's. Breaking tonight, the Manchester Board of Aldermen has just voted to approve using the old police department as a temporary homeless shelter for the winter. The building located at 351 Chestnut Street. In a letter to the Board of Aldermen, the mayor says the city has agreed to lease two floors, equaling 10,000 square feet or so, which could house about 50 people. This vote comes after several failed attempts to find a space for more than 400 homeless people in the Queen City ahead of the cold winter months. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for watching. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.